Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sergey Kromchenko from Los Angeles, California. Currently, I work as an engineering manager of SDAT. In the QA field, I've been for more than eight years. And today, we are going to talk about most common interview question in the world, which is, tell me about yourself. It sounds very simple, but it's not as it sounds. But before we jump straight into it, let me quickly remind you to hit the like and the subscribe button below if you do like this guy, if you do want to help me out. Please, please, please do. Let's get started. So how do you answer a question tell me about yourself? Before we get to it, we need to know that companies will look for two types of people. And sometimes they will look for employees and sometimes they will look for team members. Team members is my thing, employee is not my thing. When I mean employees, I, I mean that they don't care about who you are. They don't care if you're going to be a part of it, if you're going to be a good team member, if you're going to work with people very well. They just care if you're going to do the job. It's very, I would say, old-minded way of thinking. Uh, and I would prefer to work in startups where people care if you are a t good team member, where people care if your personality matches culture and a personality of other team members so you could be a great team so you guys together could make a difference that's what I usually look for but you know there are different times where different people will look for a different kind of teams or when you get started you don't really care you just want to get a job right and if you get your first job and you're gonna work as an employee not as a team member it's fine you get your experience and then you jump into what you really like so what do they want to hear when they ask you a question tell me about yourself they want to hear three things. Number one, they want to hear that you are a professional. They want to hear you telling about your past experience, about the things that you've done in the companies before or the things that you are doing in the, companies right, in the company right now. They do not want to hear about your personal achievements. They don't want to hear that, oh, my name is Sergey Kromchenko and I like to do push-ups. I do handstands and pull-ups. I can do muscle-up on the rings, you know that? They do not want to hear that. They want to hear that you are a professional engineer, software engineer, software QA, whoever you are. Second, they want to hear about your professional achievements. Aside of talking about the skills that you've gained, aside of about talking about the things that you've done for this company or for this project, you also preferably need to mention the things that you have achieved on a professional side, such as I built this framework from scratch for the UI and for API. For UI, I've used WebDriver.io. For API, I've used Axios. Both of those, uh, both of those frameworks based on a Node.js. Also, I've improved the release process by adding a smoke regression in the pre-prod, which resulted in a 40% in a 40% less production issues. And people will be like, oh, wow, this guy is awesome. So that's exactly what they want to hear. And number three, if we are talking about a company that is looking for the team member or in any ways, that's what I always do. You need to show your personality. In most cases, they will be looking for your personality to see if you are a good cultural fit. So just be yourself. Don't be afraid. Just make jokes to feel everyone more comfortable. If you make them laugh, they will like you. If you make them laugh, you will feel more comfortable. So make a joke. Don't make too many because we're not in a circus. But still, make them laugh or at least you will calm the situation down. Everyone will laugh a little bit and feel like, oh, it's getting more casual. It's not as professionally restricted as you could, you could imagine it would be. And now let me actually give you an example of an answer. I'll give you a real life answer that I gave about three or four years ago when I was a QA automation engineer. But before that, if you wanna become a QA automation engineer, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. We have a group starting in August 31st, which is a couple of weeks away. Uh, we still have a one spot available, so if you'd like to sign up, just hit the button below. All right, so how do you really answer the question? Here's, here's the way I did. So my name is Sergey Kromchenko. Currently I work, let's say, for crack.com, which is a humor website. Since I am the only one QA in the company, I am responsible for all of the QA processes, which include, but not limited to, bug, report, bug reporting, task case writing, task case automation, running regression whenever we need to, so for the automation, I use WebDriver.io for the UI. Uh, for the backend and API, I use Axios. Both of those are based on a Node.js. I use VS Code for as an IDE. I use the GitHub as the repo. 
what else do I use? Uh, I'm, uh, I use SQL, so I'm familiar with that. I'm familiar with the API testing. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on my end. Do you have any follow-up questions? Just like that. So this is how I would give an answer if I would be a, a mid-level QA uh, engineer and if I would work for that company. But for you guys, you better know how to, how to answer this question. I'm here just to help you out to structure your answers and to give you a little hints how you could improve it. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you soon.